Hello everybody, I hope everyone is doing well and welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how I achieved the look I was wearing in my Sephora VIB video. I don't think I've ever received as many requests to recreate that look out of my entire YouTube career, which I'm really excited about because this look has been my new go-to as of late. Every time I'm not filming or if I'm getting ready to film one of my sit-down videos on that couch over there, I go to this look. So for this look, I pulled out some of my old favorite combos, so you'll recognize a few of them. I had put these combos to rest for a while because I was using them way too much in my videos. And I also pulled a little bit of inspiration from the Madison Beer video that went viral. So before I get into it, I'd love for you to subscribe if you aren't already. It means so much to me, and let's get to it. So for my foundation, I'm going to be doing a little mix of the Screen Queen from Milani. I'm using the shade 240 Warm Vanilla and I'm also going to mix in some of the Glossier Perfecting Skin Tint. I'm using the Glossier Skin Tint in the shade G9, I believe. Yes, G9. So I made a little foundation egg and then I just mix it all together. I'd say I mix 60-40. 40% of the Milani and 60% of the Glossier. I've been trying to go towards lighter coverage foundations recently. I've just missed those days. So I'm just gonna spread that. It looks like a lot, but that Glossier skin tint is like 99% water and 1% coverage. So I'm just going to blend this onto my skin. This is a Royal and Lignical complexion brush. This combo, I feel like it just enhances my skin. It's slightly corrects the redness and adds like a blurring filter to my healing areas and my scarring and I've just loved it. It just makes everything softer, more blurred and super glowy but not to the point where I look oily or greasy during the day. And now that I've buffed that all over my face, I'm going to take my e.l.f. sponge and just press everything in. This is just like the perfect natural base. It's very no makeup makeup vibes. I love that I rediscovered this combo here because it just makes my skin look the way I want my skin to look. And if you want to correct any areas further, you can spot correct once you open up your concealer. So now for my concealer, I'm going to be using the e.l.f. Hydrating Camel Concealer in the satin finish. I'm using the shade Light Sand. I just filmed a full face of e.l.f. I believe that's going to be going up after this video, so keep tuned for that. But this concealer is bomb. I'm not usually a huge fan of huge wands like this, but that's what she said. I made an exception with this concealer. It's so nice. So I like to apply two dots, then blend it out from there. And if I need to add more, I will. I just don't want to overwhelm my under eye with too much coverage since I have... Okay, my neighbor's car is so loud. Especially since I have a lighter base going on, I just want everything to match seamlessly. I feel like I'm good with this amount of coverage. I have a sheer layer under my eyes. I kind of like how I still can see a little bit of darkness under my eyes, but it's just filtered. Also on TikTok, it's a huge thing now that eye bags are a trend, so we've made it, fam. <laughs> now for a touch of powder, of course I'm going to be using my Pat McGrath Under Eye Blurring Powder. And I like to apply it with an eyeshadow brush just so I can spot apply it, really concentrate it in these deeper lines of my eyes here. My guts hurt so bad today, I don't know what's going on. I have the sorest tummy ever. <laughs> IBS probs. So now for my bronzer. This has been my go-to as of late. This is the e.l.f. Forever Sun Kissed Bronzer. That's just the shade, but I think this is like the primer infused powder bronzer, I believe it's called. But this has been great. I love the color. I love how it blends out. It's just been nice and reliable. And I switched out my technique a touch. I really explained the technique in my e.l.f. video coming up, so you can keep tuned for that. I don't want it to be too repetitive, but I just enjoy applying it with this looser brush because I find that I get a softer effect, just overall looks more natural and like an actual suntan. This week, my videos are going up backwards, so I apologize for that. Did you guys hear that? My throat just made weird bubbles. Um, okay. This brush I'm using, by the way, is the BMX 120 Angled Blush brush from Moda Pro. This whole line always sounds like bikes to me. And if ever you go a little too ham with bronzer or blush or highlighter, you can take a clean brush and kind of 
flick at the edges of that and it should soften it up. So now for my highlighter, I pulled out my Ilia Decades Daylight Highlighting Powder. I'm going to add a small amount of this for some added glow. What bike does this one sound like? BMX 265 Glow Brush from Moda. And I like to do big circular motions just to polish those pearls within the highlight and so I don't get an obvious streak across my face. And this way when you move your head around it looks more realistic. And while I'm here, I'm adding it to my inner corners just so that I don't forget. It's been a step that I've been forgetting a lot recently. I don't know why. Now for blush, this is something I switch out on the daily to whatever I'm feeling. I never want my other blushes to feel left out or lonely, so I like to interchange them a lot. But the blush formula I've been loving very much recently has been the Melt Cosmetics Cream Blush Lights. I've been using the shade Lynx a lot. I think that's my favorite out of the entire entire lineup, but I think today I might go to Sundown. Here they are beside each other. They look quite similar. Here, I'll flip it so you can see. Sundown is slightly deeper with a little bit more red undertones and Lynx is kind of more golden peachy vibes. And I'm using this Royal and Langnickel Balm 38 Complexion Brush, which is a very soft, fluffy brush. I've been using this to get a softer, more diffused blush application instead of using a denser brush like I usually would. I've been enjoying applying my blushes higher up on my cheeks for a more lifted effect. Switching up your techniques once in a while just keeps it fresh and fun. And of course, I always add whatever's left on my brush to my nose here. The last step of my complexion is adding a few faux freckles. I'm using Freck. I try not to think about the placement too much or else I'll make the freckle shapes more symmetrical and you know freckles aren't symmetrical or evenly placed. This technique is great especially if you had too much coffee or matcha or whatever. Shaky hands do really good with this technique. And sometimes they look like they're sitting on top of your makeup. And if that starts to happen, I like to just reintroduce some more highlight on top of them so they look like they're underneath the makeup. And you can also take your sponge and go over and you can even add a sheer layer of your powder once again. Then I usually do this last so it sinks into my makeup a bit more. So now that my base is all done, I'm going to quickly do my brows off camera. The products I'm going to be using today are the M Cosmetics Brow Cream, of course, the House Labs Eyebrow Pencil, and some of the Charlotte Tilbury Brow Fix Clear Brow Gel that I have been testing out. So while I'm off doing that, please enjoy the intermission. So I just primed this eye, but I actually received the new Rare Beauty eye primer as well as the newer collection, like the blurring primer and the eyeshadow palette. But I wanted to try out the new eye primer and it looks really nice. It has a touch of coverage, but it feels very similar to the Fenty Beauty one in a way, just less tacky. So I'm really excited about this. It's the first tinted eye primer that doesn't look cakey or crepey on my eyelids. So this is one that I'm going to have to try out a bit, but I feel hopeful right now. So for this eye look, I've been using my favorite brown, and it's this one right here called Mar from the Melt Cosmetics Rust Palette. I just like this one against my eye color since it has some red undertones. It's very flattering for my eye color, they're complementary to each other. I feel like everyone has their perfect brown or their favorite brown, so pull that one out. And if you haven't found your perfect brown, there's plenty of brown eyeshadows in the sea. I know you'll find your perfect brown eyeshadow soon. And if you don't know what color complements your eye the best, you can pull up a color wheel like this one and you can go to whatever color your eyes are and mine are green, so cross red. So things with a red undertone are going to make my eyes pop. If you have blue, more orangey colors will make your eyes pop. And even if you do have brown eyes, you still have some color running through it, whether it's more red, more yellow, more green, more hazel. And that's how you can find your best suited complementary color. So I'm going to take a small angled eyeliner brush. This is a Royal and Langnickel Angle Eyeliner BMD 490 brush. <laughs> these names today. And I like to use eyeshadow for this. 
I find that it's softer, more forgiving, quicker, all of those things. And I just create an eyeliner. And then for the inner corner detail, I like to take an eyeliner. This is the Master Pigment Pro Pencil in the shade Soft Brown from Makeup by Mario. I like to use an eyeliner. You can also use a cream shadow, anything that's more long wearing because it tends to fade quicker, I have found. Oh, modi, modi tabarouette. I just formed that into a freckle. <laughs> And now I'm going to add a color in my crease as well as my lower lash line. I've been using this shade from Melt from the mini stack. You can use your bronzer or a contour shade. This is just the specific shade that I, I've been using. And I like to add this in the crease just to define my eye. And it's the perfect neutral shade. I find that the ones from the Rest palette are too warm for this look. And then I'll just add it to my lower as well. This is a ColourPop E22 brush. I'm going to quickly catch this eye up to speed and I'll be right back. So here are the eyes all complete. I decided to quickly do my mascara off camera. I use the Benefit Their Real Magnet one just for a fluffy lengthened look. I love this eye look so much because it has so many fun qualities to it. It's quite easy to achieve. It's sharp but soft at the same time. I think it's overall very, very flattering. But now let's move on to the lips and then we're finished. So for my lips, I cracked out one of my old favorite combos. I'm going to first line my lips with the MAC Oak Pencil. Look how tiny she is. I love how soft this one is, and I find it to be a color quite close to my natural lip color. It just has a cooler tone to it, so I find that it contours my lips slightly as well if I want them to look more plump. And I focus the lip liner more in the center of my lips on the cupid's bow same with down here and i take some of that color onto my actual lips and spread it all about just so i get a tint and there we are sometimes i leave it at that but on most days i do add a gloss and my favorite gloss to go with this look has been the kosas wet lip oil in the shade jellyfish it's just a very thin wearing gloss i like it a lot and I like to apply my clear glasses over my cupid's bow. That way when the light shines on your face, it catches the highest point of your lip and it just ultimately makes your lips look more juicy. So there we are. Here is the look all complete. What I adore most about this look is how many elements go into it. Like the skin overall is on the natural side and the way that you can still see some of my imperfections shining through the base. It's bronzed and blushed up a lot. I feel like this base just naturally enhances your features instead of covering them up and creating a whole new face shape. And the faux freckles add another natural layer to the look as well. And for the eyes, I love how soft yet sharp they are. And skill-wise, I feel like this look is relatively easy to achieve and it doesn't take too, too much time for a full face look. I've just simply been loving this look very much and you're going to be seeing it a lot on my channel. But with that being said, that is all for me today, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed today's video and found it helpful. If you did, please give this video a like. It would help me out so very much. I'll make sure to link all of these products in the description down below as always, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Love you. Bye.